Hey guys, today we were talking about planting Dutch iris and it's a bulb that my wife has been wanting me to find for quite some time. Uh, these actually do grow in bulb form, unlike a lot of irises which grow from rhizomes, these grow in bulbs. So it's an interesting plant to start out in the garden. We have a lot of iris, but we do not have any Dutch iris. So I found four packages at our big box store that were on discount because we're getting closer and closer to the holiday season and so that's when you find things marked down so let's head into the greenhouse and i'll tell you everything i know about planting iris and specifically dutch iris for success in a beautiful flower show next spring so guys a couple of facts about dutch iris is is they thrive in full sun and the other fact that's equally as important is they really need an extremely well draining soil so if you're planning on putting your dutch iris in an area that may not drain properly you need to do a little water test in your soil dig a hole that's about one foot wide and one foot deep fill it with water and if it's not completely drained in 30 minutes then that's probably not the ideal place to start your dutch iris again you want well draining soil so Dutch irises are going to do best in moderate conditions. They will probably struggle in an area that gets extreme heat or extreme cold. Now for Dutch iris to perform well in late spring and early summer when you're going to have them blooming, you want to make sure that you plant them in the fall about three to four weeks before your first frost or first hard freeze because they will not do well if you wait till you've already had that and the ground has already started to freeze. So guys, I wanted you to be able to see these bulbs because they are in great condition. They're very plump, very firm, no signs of rot or decay in them. And that's what you're looking for. When you're buying Dutch iris bulbs, you want to make sure they have this yellowish brown color and there's no evidence of root rot in the bulb themselves. So just remember, take a close look at them and make sure they have this appearance because you want them to look healthy and ready to go for next year's flowers. So guys, Dutch iris is an incredibly beautiful plant. And so along this video for a while, I'm going to show you some incredible pictures that I've collected along the way to show you how great they are and maybe inspire you to planting some of your own. Towards the end of the video is where I'm going to go through all the steps in planting in pots and things that you make sure that you need to make sure you do. So guys, wherever you plant your Dutch iris, you want to make sure that you choose a location with at least six hours of sunlight daily. And shade can be a enemy of those flower blooms because if it's too much shade that's going to hamper the blooming of your dutch iris so just remember you want that full sun as much as six hours a day or a lot more than that eight or ten hours a day so just make sure that your dutch iris stays in full sun for maximum blooms and when you plant your dutch iris you want to take into consideration these are going to grow to about three to four foot tall so if you have other plants that are growing in front of them that are going to get taller they're going to crowd out and you won't be able to enjoy the flowers, especially if they're shaded or hidden by your other plants. Now, some of your taller Dutch irises, you may want to consider staking them to keep them from falling over. And also, if you live in a windy area, that's probably going to be a necessity to prevent any wind damage. Now, Dutch iris likes the soil to be a little bit on the acidic side, 6.0 to 6.5, and I always recommend using your pH monitor so you can know exactly, exactly what type of soil pH you have to ensure optimal growth. So guys, if you have really heavy clay soils, you're going to want to amend that with some compost, peat moss, and mix that in there quite a bit. Also, sand would be a great way to improve your drainage. Just remember that, again, Dutch iris really wants to be sit standing in well draining soil. Now you can also add bone meal and blood meal to your soil and just mix it in there for an organic solution. If you're really wanting to boost your blooms, I always recommend Schultz Bloom Booster and you wanted to cultivate that into your soil about 12 to 14 inches deep. Now I prefer planting these in a pot, but also if you're planting them in a raised bed, you're going to want to make sure that you add a lot of what I call soil conditioner is from the big box store and it's basically just ground up pine bark and that will help reduce the issue with weeds competing for your Dutch iris for those nutrients. So about a one to two inch layer of that shredded pine bark is going to help slow down weeds, hold in moisture, stabilize the soil temperature and make your Dutch irises perform much better. So guys, I'm going to show you a little trick I always do when I put holes in the bottom of my planter. 
I always recommend buying planters in the fall because that's when the big box stores and the other discount stores are often wanting to liquidate a lot of their pots. This pot was normally $10, 50% off at one of our dollar type stores. And it's really a bargain when you think $5 is probably about what they paid for it. So I'm going to drill some holes in the bottom, probably six to eight, and I'm going to stop talking so I don't talk over the drill. Now the thing that I always do when I'm planting in pots is I usually take a paper towel and put it in the pot so that will still allow drainage but it will prevent the soil from washing out and I don't have to worry about an air pocket forming in the bottom of the container. So guys I'm going to bring in a little bit closer so you can see exactly the spacing and the depth I'm putting these bulbs in and you'll be able to get an idea of exactly what you need to do if you're planning on planting in containers like this one. Now guys this particular soil I'm Got a video showing you how to make your own premium potting mix. It'll save you up to 75% off of the cost of premium potting soil if you make it yourself. And it's just a lot cheaper and a lot easier than you would expect to do. So take a look at that video. I'll link it up above. So guys, whenever you look at a Dutch iris bulb, you can still, in some cases, you'll still see the roots. So you always want to plant it with a pointed side up. And you want to go about three to four inches deep. And so we're going to put that in. You also want to space them about three to four inches apart and that makes sure that you're not overcrowding them so this container will absolutely be filled with flowers in the late spring and early summer guys we're going to smooth out the soil where we've planted them and just make sure that it's slightly compacted just put a little bit of pressure and one of the things that a lot of people don't do that i like adding to almost everything i plant is worm castings I'll put the link to this bag that I purchased down below, but I put about a quarter to a half an inch of worm castings and this can act as a slow release fertilizer and also put a lot of microbial action into the soil and that can really help in so many ways. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some Osmocote slow release fertilizer and I'm going to just put that across the top of the soil and that will help and that will help the action of the root system throughout the winter. I'm also going to add in my bloom booster and that will also help the root system to get a head start. Now I'm also going to add some bone meal, just a dusting on the top of the soil and I'm going to carefully blend this together before I put in my mulch. And so just kind of put a light dusting all the way around. This is going to also help us with our phosphorus and act as an organic fertilizer. So I'm going to take a, a small root hook and just kind of mix that into the soil and try not to disturb the bulbs and just uh, help that to about, mm, about a quarter to a half an inch so just, just to get that mixed into our worm castings and the very top layer of our soil and that will definitely help our Dutch iris bulbs get a head start next spring. Now the reason I left about an inch gap from the top of the pot is I want to bring in this soil conditioner which basically is just ground up, very finely ground up pine bark and this will discourage weeds, help regulate the soil temperature and also prevent any frost damage to the bulbs since they're only a few inches from the surface. So they will be out in the cold to help go through that process of chilling which will allow them to start blooming when we first get into that warmer weather of late spring and early summer. Now another important tip is to remember to always put in some type of identification tag because if you plant as many bulbs and flowers as I do months, months, months later, you totally forget what you had in that pot and basically it's just a wait and see game. So this will save you a lot of headaches so you'll know exactly what's going on. I usually just put it right below the edge of the pot so that way I can see it there and I'll know if I want to check it and see what's in there. I just pull it out, oh, Dutch iris, and I'll know. Now you're going to want to monitor this for next spring for sprout emergence, and you want to look carefully and make sure there's no aphids or other insects attacking the newly sprouted bulbs. And I've got a video where I talk specifically about creating an organic pesticide that will work great, and I'll link that up above. So also you're going to want to make sure that you monitor the soil moisture and using a good pH meter with a water meter built into it will definitely help you know when that top two inches of soil gets dry that's when you need to water you don't want to have them waterlogged because again 
Dutch Irish does not like waterlogged soil. Now, one reason I usually recommend Bone Mill or Schultz Bloom Booster is because it has a very high phosphorus amount, and both of these are going to promote the growth of the root system and also flower blooming. So that's one thing to remember is you want to avoid high nitrogen fertilizers and focus on the P and NPK. Now I've scoured the greenhouse, but I cannot find my individual stakes for heavy flowers like ours. They will sometimes become top heavy and lean over after a heavy rainstorm. So I'll link some of those below, but those are great because they're very compact. They're kind of out of the way. You really can't see them, but it's just a long metal rod with a circle on the top and that will support your flowers once they grow and you don't have to worry about them in a heavy wind situation or heavy rain that them falling over and then they can't stand themselves back up because they have a damaged area where the soil meets the flower. Now once your iris is growing well you want to make sure that you look for brown or yellowing parts of the flower or the top portions before it has a chance to flower and just remember that could be a sign of overwatering or nutritional deficiencies and that's why it goes back to making sure you fertilize properly when you put the soil either in the ground or in a pot to make sure that the bulbs have exactly what they need for next year's growth. Now obviously you're going to want to prune away the brown or yellowing areas of your iris but also I have a, a homemade mixture that uses hydrogen peroxide that can help with fungal issues and other diseases. I'll link that up above but that can really take care of problems really quickly before they have a chance to spread to the rest of the plant or other plants that are closely planted next to them. So you want to anticipate blooming of your iris about 75 to 90 days after your planting once the frost have finished in your area. Now sometimes they may start coming out of the ground before your last frost and you can find that out by going to weather.gov, put in your zip code and you can find an estimated date of your final expected frost date. If you do expect a hard frost, you want to protect them by putting a small container or some type of protective coating or covering on top of the iris. Now you want to make sure once the flowers have started to fade that you clip at the base of the flower stem to encourage the energy to be refocused back on the bulb's health. Now you want to avoid, unless it's diseased or some other issue like that is happening with fungal issues, you want to avoid cutting away the leafy foliage as the leaves replenish the bulb's energy reserves. Now you want to remove any dead or dying foliage, spent flowers, or other debris to minimize any disease risk. Now you want to reduce your watering once your blooms have spent as excessive moisture could cause bulb rot once the dormant period starts again. Now if your bed has really done well over the year and is starting to become overcrowded, maybe the second or third year, you're going to want to consider dividing your bulbs and relocating them out where they have their own space. Now preparing for dormancy, you need to understand that the foliage will naturally start to yellow and die back. And that's as the bulbs enter their dormant state. That's just something that you don't have to be panicked or worried about. That's just a natural thing that happens. Now once your bulbs have went into a complete dormant state, you want to consider adding another one inch to two inches of mulch to help pr protect them from the winter, harsh winter conditions and provide a little bit of extra insulation. Now more than likely you're going to have to divide your bulbs every three to five years because they will start to crowd an area naturally and especially if you're growing in a pot you will probably be doing that even sooner than three years. So guys if you've received your bulbs in the mail or you purchased them from the big box store like I did you want to store them in a cool dry place without excessive humidity or moisture but you want to get them planted in the ground or your pots as soon as possible. You don't want to store them for a long time because that will definitely decrease their viability. So guys, before the next spring, you're going to want to do a pH test again on your open ground bulbs or your bulbs that you planted in a pot because the nutrients are going to be heavily absorbed by the plants, your flowers, and you want to make sure that it, the pH is not drastically changed. If it has, you want to add the proper amendments to make sure you get your pH right. And also, I always recommend putting in another quarter to half inch of either worm castings or you could use black cow compost and that can really help your flowers the following or late spring and early summer. And it makes a huge difference by adding that in there because it's just so incredibly nutritious for your flowers.
So guys, I hope some of the pictures I included here really inspired you to search out some Dutch iris bulbs. They truly are an amazing plant. And although they don't bloom for a tremendously long time, the time they are here, they're quite interesting to see and really add something to your garden. So guys, I've got a lot of extra Dutch iris to plant. I hope you'll like and subscribe if you found something helpful. And I really appreciate every subscriber, viewer, and everyone that leaves a comment. If I left something out or there's something you want to add, please leave it down below. Have a great day, guys.